What to do, y'all? This is Chris Evans, and this is Talking Data and More. And today, I have a very special guest joining me on Talking Data and More. Not only is my guest a colleague of mine at Talon, but he's also a guest that helps me tell and enable customers and understand the importance of data governance and data catalog. And not only that, my guest is a true rock star, not only to the heart, but to the core. Welcome my guest, Steve Fazio. Steve, what it do? Yeah, I'm excited. I, I was wondering who your guest was gonna be. <laughs> this sounded like a great, great opportunity. <laughs> well, come on, Steve, you know, you, you, you know it had to be you, right? True rock star to the heart, even though you're missing the hair, but that's all right, I got it, it for the both of us. <laughs> I'm a 90s guy, yeah. I'm, I'm in, the, in the, uh, the Smashing Pumpkins. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. And, and you know, Steve, be before we get into it, I got to ask you two simple starting questions. Rockstar, you said Smashing Pumpkins. For the folks <laughs> that don't know who you are, can you give a brief background of your data superpowers and also your Rockstar superpowers? We'd love to know that. Well, um, so from the first, the first question is, I've been involved with data governance uh, probably before you were born. Um, back, back before it was even called data governance. Um, and I, I was uh, uh, pre previously with IBM, big company called IBM doing uh, data governance and, and data quality, data integration, and been involved with the first, the first ever metadata data catalog solution in the industry. So I've been involved with that since the beginning. And then, uh, so fast forward to today, I've been at Talon, which has been a great, great, um, great ride here for the last couple of years. Um, I've been the chairman of the Center of Excellence for Data Governance. And also, I also over, oversee the data catalog program, um, which kind of means I, I, I'm a jack of all, master of none, <laughs> trades as it is when it comes to data catalog um, and data governance. Um, so that's the, the data piece of it. The, uh, the guitar piece of it, I mean, I don't know if you say I'm a rock star, but I've played with a lot of them. I mean, I played uh, I played with Toby Keith. I played with the Go-Go's, with Weird Al Yankovic. Uh, I was actually, we played at uh, Van Halen, Michael Anthony, the bass player for Van Halen. We played at his daughter's wow. wedding. Um, so yeah, just to name a few. So I've, I've been very fortunate to play with a lot of, a lot of rock stars, of, you know, in my time. So uh, I wouldn't say I'm a rock star, but I've definitely been <laughs> been on stage and got to play with a bunch of different rock stars. And I still play today. Well, we still play all the time today. That's awesome. And Steve, if you're not the rock star as a musician, you're definitely a rock star in data. So I'll just give you that. How about all I'll right, give you that? I'll title? take that. Yeah. Yeah. I do this for the fame <laughs> and the fortune and the guitar is for the for hobby and fun. <laughs> that's right. Data yeah. rock on. I love it. <laughs> Uh, and you know, Steve, I got to ask you another light question. I, I love the, the uh, background of you and your data superpowers, your rock star superpowers, even though you don't consider your rock star, I do. You know, I love to bring not only data, but my love of just anime and comics and, you know, cartoons, things of that nature, things that I feel like as a kid during COVID, we need to have those fun times. I got to ask you, do you have any or favorite superhero, comic hero, cartoon, it could be anything. And why? I got to ask that too. Oh, hey, you put me on the spot. See now, if my wife were in here, she's an anime fan. So she lives okay. in breeze anime. <laughs> so she'd be better. <laughs> she loves all the, you know, the Marvel. I, have, I actually have a Marvel face, you know, face mask that I'm forced to wear. <laughs> in public, so she makes me wear that stuff. Um, that's a good question. You know, I, I always thought about that. I mean, I like Teen Titans. Does that count? <laughs> yeah, that counts. Come on, Cyborg, Robin. There's a lot. I love it. My daughters love that. Okay. I uh, totally. Awesome. You know, I, I like Raven. <laughs> okay, even better. Yeah, the uh, mystery. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. great. That's great. And Steve, that's perfect for you. You have that mystery, right? Data yeah. governance is a mystery. Uncover that mystery. Love it. I love it's it. A lot of, a lot of, it's the stuff that no one else wants to take care of. It's kind of the black magic of data, right? It's there. Uh, data quality and data governance is always a problem, but you know, sometimes you just need a straight face to tell people how it is and, and go fix it, no matter how, you know, no matter how dirty it is. That's true. I love it. No, I love that. 
Uh, and, you know, I got to get into it. You mentioned, you know, you got into this before I was born. I don't believe that. I believe it's more the red light, red light, green light days when I was maybe a little bit shorter. OK, OK. And you mentioned you work for that little itty bitty company, right? Um, yeah. Can you get into it? Where has that evolved now? What have you, because you've been into it in the trenches and now seen it where it's at. I'd like to start off with what you've seen today. In the governance, in data governance, yeah. So Yeah, love to. Well, you know, wait, wait, once upon a time, you know, data governance, it was a term that gets thrown out way too often. A lot of people confuse data quality with data governance and some people confuse like privacy and, and policy and, and different compliance laws being data governance. Well, it's, you know, it's all of the above. Um, and, and way back when the technologies were very disjointed uh, to support data governance. So you'd have things like data profiling. So you know what data profiling is. I wanna just, I have something, I wanna go figure out what's in there. It's like if you go into your garage and you're gonna move your house and you're trying to figure out what boxes you're gonna move. This one box might have written on it, you know, baseball gloves and you open, look in the box and it's, you know, it's weightlifting trophies. <laughs> it's something completely different, right? That, that, that's kind of like data, data profile. You have to understand exactly what's in those boxes of data, those tables before you go to move it. Right? And that was a very, um, very common process and practice that we've used since the 80s, 70s, whatever, just from the beginning of time, just the method by which you would go do that. And those types of things like data profiling tools, there's actually a product uh, that we had way back 15 years ago. It was called Profile Stage. It was a standalone product. That was the name of the product called Profile Stage. And then there were other products that would do specific things. So you have that profiling activity and then you have data quality activities and you'd have uh, data classification, you have glossary, you have metadata and all these different things were separate and folks would buy them and, you know, and kind of, wrap them up together. Prior to my IBM days, I actually used to work for a wit living and I was at a car company called uh, Mazda and, and I was a consultant uh, there and it was a uh, same type of thing. It was, you'd have all these different technologies trying to work with each other and you, I, it was a full-time job writing all the bridges and all the connectivity between everything. Well, obviously we see the, the progression in data governance tools where now it's more of a consolidated um, integrated platform of things that do all those different functional areas together and share a common, we call, you know, call them a common metadata foundation. So I'd say the biggest change in those 15 years was going from point segregated solutions to single, more cohesive, uh, component-based suite, as you say, so suite solutions rather than just pieces, parts. So that's the biggest change. And if you're seeing it now, even more where you're saying um, data governance, the company switching us, data governance is actually now a business outcome, it's a solution. So not just the processes, not just the actual, I'm sorry, not just the technical aspects of it, but all the processes and the people parts are now starting to come together now after how many, 20 years, we're all starting to figure it out that it's actually a collective unification of the people process and the technology. Or data governance being a very you know critical and important part. So it's it's progressed from just tasks, activities, and tools to an actual business outcome. Does that make sense? I hope. Totally. Makes totally sense. makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And I love how you you bring that foundation back, right? The technology, people, and process. We always right. forget about that. Yeah. And that's like the core to it. And like you said, it's evolved since you're 15 years. And no, I was born by that, trust me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is now. <laughs>